Auto Line at CES is brought to you by Borg Warner, Intrepid Control Systems, and by Gentex. Niall Berkery is with a company called Neuro. He's the, the COO and co-founder of it. And Niall, you're telling me that the brain is the last frontier and that you're able to use brain waves to really help driving and drivers. Take it from there. Yeah, we, well we think it could be the next frontier. So we've got a lot of insights on drivers today coming from cameras. Cameras are looking at surface level kind of visual cues. The brain can reveal a lot about the human that's in the vehicle, whether that's the driver or the passengers in the vehicle. There's a whole variety of information we can glean from a driver's brain waves, basically from this science of EEG that's been around for decades. And our breakthrough is that we can do it contactless. So we can actually measure brain waves a short distance from the head. And as, as crazy as that sounds, it's, it's been validated by the University of Connecticut. They've done a study on our technology. But there's a whole variety of different insights we can glean. The no, wait, 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 I got to stop you yeah, right okay. there. Because yeah. everybody's going to go, what do you mean <laughs> brain waves? Yeah. You're, you're saying that brain waves are emanating from our head. Yeah. Yeah. But what? Very low power, right? Very low power. So every thought in your head, every every uh, everything starts in the brain with, with a neuron firing, which is essentially an electrical signal. So that electrical signal can be measured as a voltage. And in our case, we're actually picking it up as an electromagnetic field. So very, very low power in the nanowatts that does emanate a, a small bit from the head. But once we can pick that up, then we can really uh, glean a variety, a whole host of different insights. And, into... and let's talk about, it. you've uh, you've yeah. got a sensor embedded in the headrest exactly. of the seat of a, a, a car. And so if somebody is sitting in the seat, you can pick up their brain waves. Ab absolutely, yeah. So we can pick it up, up to about 12 inches from the head. So we've essentially, we've got, we've got essentially a radio receiver. We have an antenna and a receiver inside here that's detecting and then we're feeding that to a data collector. In this case here, it's on a, it's on a laptop uh, computer, and that's actually, that's doing the, it's uh, gleaning the insights from the actual signal itself. So I, I guess the real magic is not just in being able to collect the brain waves, but doing something with it. Absolutely, yeah. So you got two, yeah, two things. There's, a, there's one challenge in, in actually detecting the, the actual signal itself, that very low frequency EEG signal. The other part is deriving some insights from that. Now the fortunate thing is there's a lot of research that's been done globally. So people have, de people have developed fatigue algorithms or impairment algorithms so, or relaxation algorithms that we can actually use as a starting point and then we can optimize ourselves from then very, very quickly. So with this contactless sensor built into the headrest, you could tell if somebody is inebriated or high? Absolutely, yeah. So you can detect if, how tired somebody is. You can detect if somebody is is, uh, is, is drunk or, or high from whatever, legal or illegal drugs. So it's actually measuring a state of impairment. And so what do you think automakers will do with this kind of information? Obviously, if, if you're inebriated or high, maybe the, the engine won't start or something like that, but... Yeah, that, that's an interesting one because it's, uh, there is some, some potentially some legislation coming from NHTSA down the road. Now, it's, the unclear part is what do you do in that case? I think at a minimum, you, the car should turn on all of the safety sensors. So in any case, if, if, if a driver is impaired to any degree, they're tired, they're stressed, or something that they may have consumed something they shouldn't have done, at least in that case there, the car should do everything possible to get that person home. And uh, But I, personally, I don't envision the situation where people are going to be sh shut out from their car. That opens up the door to other potential there, there, risks yeah, in yeah, each case. Absolutely right. There, but, uh, but relaxation, yeah. and especially when we get into semi-autonomy, level yes. three, talk a little bit about yeah. the v advantages that your system can offer there. Yeah, so, so we can biosense everything from relaxation to what the opposite is like peak performance and particularly as you get into these like level three where you're really in a car and the car is doing everything there this it opens up the opportunity for doing some ver variety of other value added use cases for the user it could also be in today's car it could be a case where you're picking up the kids from school you arrive a few minutes early or you're you're waiting outside in the parking lot your wife is shopping you could, you could also do some relaxation there as well but level three would be a fantastic one and you could be driving, so driving a couple of hours to your meeting, you might want to relax a portion of the journey, 
So we can biosense, the car can actuate to get you more relaxed, and then maybe as you're right, right before you're meeting, the car gets you back into a peak performance state. So you gotta, Okay, so what kind of things would happen in the car to get me relaxed yeah. and then maybe get me geared up for an important meeting? Yeah, so there's a whole, yeah, there's a variety of act actuation techniques, lighting is one. So lighting is, is a fantastic one for uh, either helping reduce stress, uh, getting people to calm down, audio obviously, heating of all sorts in the seat with vibration, the coming coming from the, the HVAC itself. There's even talk of some of the higher end cars have aroma as well, just like you get in the hotels with those, those nice aromas, same thing in the car. So there's a whole variety of different things that can be done to uh, to help with that. Okay, important question. Do you have any customers? Are you hearing from automakers or their suppliers? A lot of interest, yes. Yeah. So a lot of interest from everybody we're talking to, there's generally interest. Uh, we, we've done four evaluations over the past year. So we came out of Stealth uh, 12 months ago. One of those is now progressing into a, a joint development agreement. So a larger POC, a multi-stage POC that's going to take place over the coming months. The second OEM, we're in discussion around something similar. So, we're, and then the other two, we got two other tier ones we're working with, and that's all in the passenger car. And then we also have activity now starting in the commercial fleet. So we've quite a lot of interest from the commercial fleet space. And I got to believe this kind of technology goes well beyond automotive as well. Yeah, there's there's some there's some dual use defense applications as well. So we we have discussions with uh, early stage with discussions with the. Uh, the U.S. Air Force around pilot uh, cognitive load, also warfighter stress and medical emergencies is another one as well. So we're, we're also talking with the ground vehicle team, the ground vehicle systems team in, in the greater Detroit area as well. So yeah, there's a variety of different applications. You mentioned the Detroit area, so Numo's based in Detroit. We're in Detroit, yeah. Numo's based in Detroit, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Anything that I'm missing here, Niall, that you, no, you might want to add? No. Yeah, well, we, look, I, I want to thank you very much for your time today. Thank you, John, appreciate it so much.